All right. There we go. All right. Good evening and welcome, everybody here. Uh, welcome back here as we carry on our conversations with individuals that are running for local office, state office, any office. Um, the goal here when we have these conversations with folks is to highlight these individuals to get them in, you know, find out why they're running for office. And of course, give you guys, the people, the opportunity to learn more about folks, to hear what it is that they're about. And really in the end of the day, so you guys can make a good choice. Obviously we've had other guests on here before. We've had David King, Orlando Owens, Adam Fisher, Kyle Hughes. And I want to keep this train running here. Right now we have a gentleman out of Pierce County, over there on the west side of Milwaukee, Wisconsin. That's what happens when you live in Milwaukee too long. Everything's Milwaukee. But I have Martin Kretzman, and I hope I'm pronouncing your name correctly. Martin, did I get that right, Kretzman? Yeah, that's pretty close. That works. See, I got to be careful with that because uh, I got the same <laughs> problem. Like, what's your last name? Delgado. Delgidio? Delgidio. Sure. <laughs> that works. Whatever yeah, you want it to be. Yeah, when people say that you like, do you pronounce your name that way? So listen, I've been I've been called worse today. So let's go with that. <laughs> it's like yeah, I, I have kids. Trust me, I've been called a lot worse. It's that's right. It's yeah. Okay. <laughs> Goodness, but Martin, welcome and and thank you yep. for joining in here tonight. Absolutely, I'm glad to be here. So, I guess start off by telling us about yourself, because obviously, um, you yourself, if I did my research right. You got your own business, and it looks like, you know, uh, music is, is a big thing for you. Um, but what got you, you know, wanting to get involved in the county supervisor position? I mean, that's, you know, you're taking the leap there. Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm originally from Iowa. Um, my wife and I moved out to River Falls two years ago this April, and we have three kids. They're preteens and teens now. Um, when we lived in St. Paul, they went to a smaller kind of charter school. Uh, out there and then we moved here they went to the um, public school here and uh, we started to get a little bit more involved in uh, the school of course and we at the time we had three we had kids in three schools we had an elementary school junior high and then high school and now I got two in junior high one in high school um, and we just started to get more involved and in showing up to meetings more and this was right you know kind of right when COVID really started to to get strange. And so uh, when we moved out to River Falls, our kids were actually all doing distance learning, um, mm -hmm. which wasn't great, I think, for anybody. And um, we started to get a little bit more interested in what was going on at the county level and the city level. And well, I, I, I shouldn't say at, I mean, at all three of them, city, county, and then with the school district, um, because we, we started to see what was going on in the community. Well, a lot of the neighbors, we live in kind of a rural part of River Falls. And uh, we have neighbors on kind of on both sides of us and up and down the, the road that have uh, restaurants and bars and retail mm -hmm. in River Falls and kind of Pierce County. And they were just being summarily shut down. Uh, and at the same time, you know, Walmart up in Hudson and, and Target were still allowed to be open. Liquor stores were open. Um, but the, the small town retail and, and uh, restaurants were being limited about what, how many people could be in there and what they could wear and, you know, all that. And it, it got me more interested. And so they invited me out to some county board meetings um, out at uh, Pierce County uh, Fairgrounds. Um, and to be honest, it's something that I actually share a lot with, but I'm, I was just shocked at kind of what was being proposed uh, to the board when it came to some of the, the new uh, health ordinances and restrictions. Um, and, and, Going to city council meetings and school board meetings and county board meetings was really surprised at how the members of the community that were being that were standing up and either a just making comments during the public comment section or asking questions about these things were being treated. Um, mm -hmm. And I just wasn't OK with it. You know, like we're all grown adults. We all have uh, opinions about what was going on, especially at this moment when it was so uh, heightened and uh I think my eyes were just open a little bit. So uh, kind of long story short, as as kind of a lark last last November, I decided to run for our township board on the Thursday before the Tuesday election as a write-in candidate, kind of as a, I'm not going to say a joke because I wasn't trying to be funny about it, but I was like, what would happen, right? right? Like it's a, it, I think it has like five people on our township board, little township. And uh, I got 23 votes. 
which I felt pretty good about. And yeah. then I immediately told my wife that I retired from politics and I'll never, ever run again. Um, and my How'd that neighbors, work out? Yeah, right. Well, what happened was after <laughs> that, we kind of had, I said, OK, I, you know, I, I joke that I never conceded that election. Um, so it's still, you know, it's still out there. Um, but my neighbors said, no, we we think that you've got a voice that would be interesting at the county level. And we've decided that you're going to run next spring. And uh, we're going to help you, you know, financially and encourage you and kind of give you the tools and resources to do it. So it was kind of at the prodding of my neighbors and some close friends out here in Pierce County that said that you need to do this and try to step up and kind of make a ruckus. And I want to throw a link here. I got a couple links that I have, and I want to make sure I put this up here for the duration of our conversation. First, I'm going to put your website up here. I want everyone to make sure that you guys are taking a look at this, especially if you're in the Pierce County area. This is where you're going to learn a lot more about Martin. You're going to find out more about his platform. And obviously, we're going to discuss more on that tonight. The other yeah. thing, though, um, you know, he's got his Facebook page. You can make sure yep. you follow him there. Get all that good information. And a big thing. And I know it's, it's so funny. I know so many people are running, but so many people are gun shy about just even talking about this. We got the <laughs> donation link. You know, yep. <laughs> you, you, yep. you really got to, you know, money talks. And when people yep. talk about that, I mean, it's it's not it's not a cliche. Yep. People need money to run elections. You need money for placards, boards, you name it. And yep. if you believe in your candidates, if you believe in freedom, this is one way that you're going to be able to help them sustain these races. Because some of these races, I mean, yeah, you have an election. Some have the elections in April. Some yep. are, I think, further on down the road. And then, of course, there's others in November. So now when is yours going to be happening? The county board elections are April 5th, so it's a spring election. Okay. Yep. So yours is just right around the corner, so every dollar helps. So make sure you guys are checking out those links there. Um, so obviously, family's a big motivator. You got the community behind you. Um, one of the things that – and I've heard Sheriff Clark talk about this at a couple of events. I've mentioned this, too. One of the best ways to get involved is at a local level. Sheriff Clark kind of took it a little further when he talked about the idea that that's great. You can send a congressman, a senator out to D.C., but you're not going to change D.C. Yep. The real change has to happen here at home. Yep. Now, in light of everything that you've seen over the last two years in particular, all of us have been part of this uh, experiment, if you will. Mm -hmm. How do you see if at all possible, would a county board be able to say, hey, enough with the mandates? You might pull that up elsewhere in Milwaukee or other places like that, but you ain't doing it here. I th yeah, I, it's it's interesting because I, you know, I've actually been um, paying a lot more attention to local races this year, probably than I ever have in my entire life. And um, when I, I had the, the pleasure to meet Orlando Owens, and Kyle Youth and some of the other gentlemen that you had you'd mentioned earlier, and they, they yep. kind of talk about the same things, and they talk about this local, everything's local, everything's yep. local. And I think that what was interesting to me was when I found out just the power that the county had um, when it came to, uh, well, kind of everything. I mean, what happened was when the federal government can't do what they're supposed to do or, or what they want to do, then the the it gets deferred to the states, which is where most of the power should be. Mm -hmm. And right now, Wisconsin is so divided with the governor that we have and then with who the other elected officials. And so they're kind of canceling each other out in a way. And then that gets deflected down to the even more local level, down to the county level and down to the city right. level. And so when I was looking at the things that were affecting me the most and affecting my kids and affecting um, my neighbors and my business itself, it was all county. It was all coming from the county. Well, and I think we saw a lot of that, especially after the debacle with the uh, with the health secretary that was here. And I can't remember. I think it was Megan Wolf was her name. Sure. Um, you know, with the mandates that they had. And my understanding was Evers could only do it one time. It was a 90 day thing, but it was just one more EO after another. But yep. then they ended up deferring to the county health boards. Yep. You know, and this is one of those issues where I think, you know, if you're a student of the Constitution and understanding limited government, then you understand that an unelected bureaucrat shouldn't be determining whether or not your business is essential or not. Yes. You know, and it's funny because 
a lot of what you had described, I sadly live in a little town here in Washera County, and I saw a lot of the same thing. I understood the liquor stores being open because obviously you don't want to, if you have a global pandemic and it's going to be as bad as they say that it is, I'm pretty sure you don't want to have like a bunch of alcoholics going through detox at that time. No. So there was that much I understood, <laughs> but yeah. I, I did have a problem too when I saw like bars, restaurants, you know, mom and pop stores being shut down. Meanwhile, you know, you can go to Piggly Wiggly and, you know, no worry yeah. about the crowd size or anything. My favorite was when I went to a gas station. I walked in. I just wanted to go in and get a pack of smokes and a Coke, right? Whatever. Yep. <clears throat> I walk in the door, and this lady, she looked at me. You need to have a mask on. Yep. I'm, I'm, I'm fine, ma'am. No, you're not. Yep. Easy there. Little thing, too. And it, it was something that, that really struck me hard because it was like, wow. On any other given day, you wouldn't have came up to me and said that, or anyone else for that matter. One of the things I saw on your website was talking about neighbor versus neighbor. You yep. know, communities, kind of, you know, families at odds with one another. Could yep. you address that a little bit more? Well, what the, I think the interesting thing is, is that I see, I mean, I'm big on neighbors right now. And like I, I, I mentioned that we... So I'm from Iowa. We moved to Minnesota. We were there for a while. Lived in the East Side, uh, 15 years. Lived in uh, the, what they probably call the Greater East Side of yeah. St. Paul, and that though those neighborhoods popped up in the 50s. The houses that we lived in, or the neighborhood we lived in, the the houses you could almost touch both both uh, houses if you were standing mm -hmm. in the middle, right? Like when I would mow the lawn between the houses, I could almost reach my hands out and touch both sides um, or both houses. And in the 15 years that we lived there. I think that I maybe talked to my neighbors maybe three times. Yeah. Um, we, we did the courteous, you know, kind of nod and, you know, good morning, good evening, you know, that kind of thing. Maybe um, it just wasn't a part of the culture. And as much as we tried, there was a lot of it was that neighborhood was kind of a revolving door of rentals as well. And it was just hard to get to know people. And so I kind of gave up right. um, the minute that we moved in here to River Falls. We weren't we were unpacking when one of our neighbors rolled up in their car and introduced themselves. Right. And since then, I've, I've had a sense of neighbor that's just way deeper and way different. And then all of a sudden, I'm seeing neighbors that all, just because they have a little bit different outlook on, I don't even want to say politics, just on the world right now. And, right. Um, and, it, and we have to make sure that other people are behaving in a certain manner and and i'm i'm a big believer in you take care of you and i'll take care of me and i also understand that it's a responsibility though for me to help my neighbors but i'm not i'm not the government doesn't get to tell me that or i don't need to i don't need them to tell me that and so i've i've had uh neighbors that are very like-minded and um i have neighbors that aren't very like-minded to me and i i've tried to real just establish a baseline of I, I don't care. It doesn't it doesn't matter what you what your views are on that stuff. We if if my car's in the ditch, I hope you're going to help me. And right. our neighbor, you know, our neighbor had a dog out the other day, and and uh, I know this sounds silly, but they're searching for their dog, and it's like we're out helping them find their dog. Like it 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 is as small as that is. Understanding what community is and neighbors to me is is very important now. And I think that we've been we get uh, we we get fed a lie that if you're not identically like-minded that not only can you not like somebody you can't you certainly can't be friends with them and it's actually your duty to kind of destroy them right. and i've seen that here in river falls a lot and even among some of the businesses in town um that won't allow people in if they're not masked or vaccinated or whatever and i'm like what are what are we doing here where where is the focus where should it be and how do we get past it because there is going to be a moment like like I mentioned that you're going to be in the ditch and you're going to need your neighbor that believes the exact opposite thing you do. And we have to get back to that, that, that mindset that we, we can't believe the lie that we're more different than we are similar. I, you know, we breathe the same air. We all bleed the same blood. And there's this narrative out there that if somebody doesn't align with you perfectly, that you have to hate them. And that that's driving me crazy. It's just, it's literally driving me crazy. Well, you know, the reality of it is it's hyper partisan. You know, right. it is this this I this tribalist idea. 
And admittedly, I, I probably do contribute more than my share to it. Um, yeah. You know, when I take a look at the ideas that I put forth, you know, and you know, I will own it 100%. You know, when I talk about individuals on the left, I'm not talking to them as though they're good people. Yeah. But, you know, outside of the political, yeah, you, you got to try to make it a point to say, you know what, in the end, people are still people. You really need to, you know, you yep. see somebody in distress, what are you going to do? Just keep walking on by? Yep. I mean, how, if, it, if it was on the other side of the, you know, where you're the one in distress, wouldn't you want somebody to come to your aid just the same? By the same token, too, I noticed, you know, the story that you outlined is very akin to what I've kind of been through when I used to live in the Milwaukee area. And it's funny because you can tell what cities have like foundries and other industries and stuff like that, because they have those houses where they, you literally you go like this and you're touching yep. two houses. Yep. And that sense of community is almost non-existent because it's like, just don't look at me. I'm going to go into my house, whatever. Yep. You come out to the rural areas of Wisconsin. It is it's such a different world. Um, but you still have your elements of tribalism, yep. you know, and, and it's definitely a toxic thing. Um, one of the things that I noticed here over the last two years, too, when you look at all the, the tribalism and what's really kind of pulled things apart here is, you know, Minneapolis. Obviously, they had the George Floyd incident, which sparked riots all over the country, which, of course, yep. stoked the flames of more tribalism, more hyperpartisanship. How much of that has kind of from the Twin Cities area, how much of that has kind of made its way to Pierce County into your, your neck of the woods? Well, I was living, I was living in, or I, we were here when that happened, but I was working in downtown St. Paul when that all went down. And uh, I, I, I remember watching it come across the river from Minneapolis to St. Paul and just the, that wave of, I mean, everything of emotion of people of, all, all of that f flames <laughs> was a part of that yeah. wave um, and trying to figure out what we were going to do as a business at that moment. Um, do we send people home? Do we lock the doors? Do we, um, you know, all that. And it, we stayed through that day. And of course that was over a matter of, you know, a couple of weeks, but um, we watched it then come through the Eastern suburbs, roll out to uh, Hudson and it, what was interesting when we got to the River Falls is that, and I think it, is, it sounds, again, this is a micro environment out here in, in kind of small town of Wisconsin, mm -hmm. but the downtown River Falls proper, I think, has a little bit different political makeup than rural area around River Falls. But, and they were like, well, we're going to do protests and we're going to do, um, you know, these big marches through River Falls, which, you know, downtown River Falls is all of six blocks or five blocks. So it's not gonna be too yeah. long. But uh, the thing that I, that was uh, interesting, I think you'll find this interesting, Ed, is that they were, they were, they were like, okay, we're going to have this big protest to support this whole movement. Uh, and they were throwing it all over Facebook. And somebody said, that's great. But remember that at the park in, in downtown river falls, there's a, there's a snapping turtle nest underneath the park bench. So uh, just be careful of that. You know, and I was like, well, that's small town, baby. Mm -hmm. Like, that's like, and I, I was like, okay, I can kind of get on board with that a little bit. Like, okay, we're going to make a little bit of a ruckus and a little bit of a noise, but we still have to be respectful of a snapping turtle nest in downtown. So that's as far as we kind of saw that come across right. this way. Um, you know, there was a lot of emotions, a lot of flags, and a lot of signs that came up or whatever. But I think that um, it, stuff got diffused a little bit when we came out this far. Right. Well, it's, it's interesting when you go into smaller towns, you might have somebody that might have a protest. You might have somebody who, you know, might have an issue and they'll yeah. raise a little bit of a ruckus. But a lot of it is like you don't really want to tear up where you don't want to tip over the table you're about to eat at. Yep. You know, and I think it's an interesting mindset what you see out in some of these areas versus the major metropolitan areas. And as somebody who's kind of been around different uh, states and stuff, it's it's kind of the same almost anywhere you go yeah um now obviously you're running for you the county board uh district eight there if yep. as a board supervisor what are some of the biggest issues you guys are encountering right now in pierce county well we're similar i think that we're very tied to um st croix county which is just just north of us but we mm -hmm. we obviously have our own kind of 
list of issues and and uh, and um, items that are kind of affecting us as well. Um, a, a big thing that we're kind of struggling with right now is just how how our county board, um, what that relationship is with the county sheriff's department, um, what that looks like. That's kind of a struggle right now. Um, I, and there's there's a lot of projects that are out there. There's um, some agricultural issues, a lot of land use issues out here. I've, I'm actually learning quite a bit. Um, you know, I'm from a farming, I, I can say farming community in Iowa, although I wasn't a farmer, um, right. but a lot of my friends were. And so I'm, I'm getting back into that culture and kind of understanding what are, what are most important because, or what is most important. District eight is a very rural district. So district eight, uh, runs south of river falls, uh, down to a small town called Beldenville, then over to a town called, um, kind of Lawton and up to Martell and over, and it, it's all rural stuff. Um, right. And so I'm learning and relearning what is most important to, to my district specifically. Um, and it's, and it's, it is a lot, it's a lot of farmers um, and a lot of people that are also commuting uh, that own land um, that are actually commuting to other parts of Wisconsin and, and Minnesota too. So um, specifically it, I'm focused on our relationship with law enforcement um, and the uh, kind of countywide, cause that's a broken relationship right now that I think needs to get mended. Um, there's a ridiculous amount of money that's being unaccounted for right now, um, partially from all the COVID um, relief bills yeah. and stuff that have come through, just millions and millions of dollars that we're struggling to find out where it went and where, what it got spent on. Um, and uh, uh, and uh, the health ordinance out here, like you mentioned, like a lot of, a lot of the counties in Wisconsin got um, – a lot of proposals for expanding their health departments and health and human services departments. Pierce County was not immune to that. And we passed, uh, must have been, it was a year and a half ago, we passed a health ordinance. Um, I think it was two votes to 15. There's 17 board, board or seats on the board. Um, okay. And it was so restrictive, so restrictive. Um, it took an unelected official, like you said, um, and essentially made her into a law enforcement officer. Well, and that's the scary part when you have an individual who's, you know, and God bless people working in healthcare because obviously we need them. Um, it, there's people that they study it, they're, it's their profession, they help people out. At least that's what they're supposed to do. Sure. But to have somebody un unelected literally make life and death calls for people to the extent that, you know what, you, you're not essential enough. So therefore, you're not going to be working. Sorry if you don't eat. Yeah, that's that's that thing that just killed me. Yeah, I I I didn't get it. I still don't get it. I don't understand why why it had such wide support in Pierce County. And the the, the I guess the basic reason. And you asked me earlier, Ed, is that well, why are you running? And I'm like, I don't think that the current board of supervisors accurately represents our county. It just doesn't. We have, like I said, we have 17 seats right now. There's kind of two more constitutional, I would say, conservative leaning people on the board. Um, right. And then that's it. And, th and there's no way that's accurate. In fact, I know for a fact it isn't. And so you have, you have two of 17 and any sort of voice uh, from that, um, that worldview or that perspective is ignored. And I'm not okay with that. That and people are asking, "What's your platform? Are you looking to change or take over, or whatever?" And that and that isn't my goal. My goal right. is to have a seat at the table. That's it. I want my like-minded um, voice that's interested in the Constitution and protecting the the citizens' rights and liberties of Pierce County. That's what I'm about. Is about yeah. protecting those rights and knowing that no mandate or ordinance is going to trump that because it doesn't it doesn't work that way. And we got so concerned on um, could we do something or in, instead of if we should do it or the, what's the legality right. of it, we just did it. Um, and I, I, it just all those things make my blood, my blood boil. Well, and it, you know, it's funny because in retrospect, you know, you can certainly look at something and be the armchair quarterback because retrospect gives you 2020, you know, perspective. Okay. Yep. In 2020, we were dealing with a novel virus. And I'm always quick to say, you know, Yes. Is COVID real? Yes, it is. Yep. If you haven't taken health precautions to get yourself in better shape, I recommend you do it now. But you know what? I'm not a medical professional. I don't give medical advice. Yep. But I get it, man. People were scared. Oh, yeah. It was on the news all the time. But yet people were just going ahead and saying, you know what? This is what we need to do. Well, does this pass constitutional muster? 
Is this illegal? When did the government get to tell me I can shut down my, you know, music shop, comic book store, um, you know, whatever? Yep. When was that? When did we ever do anything like that short of like World War II? Yep. You know, where you nationalized some factories for the war effort. And even yeah, then and that, you gave it back when it was all done. Yeah. And that I think and that's the I think that's always been the carrot that's out there right now is just don't worry. Um, <clears throat> once this is all over, we're going to bring stuff back to normal. Um, but I also know that uh, government, no matter how at what level, whether it be federal, state or city, is that once you give them power, let me back up, maybe once you let them take it, um, mm -hmm. you, it's going to be a struggle to get it back. And, and I, I don't, I just don't understand the, the switch that happened that like you mentioned that it was like, wait a minute, no, why is nobody even asking whether this is legal for us to make these decisions or not? Um, and luckily I think what's, what's going to come out of this, it's happening more in the twin cities <clears throat> and in some of the larger metro metros in Wisconsin too, is that, um, oh, there's a lot of lawsuits happening and those lawsuits are coming out to the favor of these businesses, but the damage is done. Right. You know, how many businesses went out of business? How many restaurants went under? There's churches that came out and sued. And, and then the, the state Supreme courts are like, yeah, no, you're right. We, we didn't have the right to do that. Well, that, that ship has sailed. So yeah. where, how do we, how do we correct it now? And I think that in the future, there's some lessons to be learned again at the County level. Um, and I appreciate you giving me the opportunity to come talk tonight. Cause I, I feel like a lot of the attention gets, on, onto the, the, the larger country and even statewide races, which is our obviously imperative. Um, but what's happening in our counties affects every, your every day. You know, it affects every, every minute of my day is, is essentially a, a, a ripple effect of the decisions that have been made at the county and the city level. Right. Um, and it just, it, again, I, I mean, that's, I get passionate about this stuff. So I apologize. No, I don't work. <laughs> no, I, I am so glad you do, and I will give you all the time in the world for that because I, I think you're you're absolutely right about that because oftentimes during an election, you know, a presidential election term, everybody's looking at all the elections, massive turnout, all this other stuff. Whether you believe Trump won or not, just look at the raw numbers of people that actually went out and voted. I guess we're going to include the dead too. Uh, yeah, I said that out loud. Uh, but, you know, we're looking at all the numbers here, massive turnout. Yep. Then you go to the off-year election, which we're in now, election 2022. Yep. This year is going to be, I think, much higher turnout than normal. But generally, yep. you don't have a focus on that. Our focus becomes, you know, governor's race, lieutenant governor, so on and so forth. The sexy positions. Yep. Very few people take pay attention to, you know, the county board, the school boards. And honestly, it's interesting because I think virtual learning, something you, you mentioned. So my son actually he did virtual learning and I actually kept him out an extra year just because I'm not going to have him learn thinking that masking up is normal. Yep. There's a time and place to play the game, but yep. wearing it every day, that's not it. Um, so you had all these kids doing distance learning and it's amazing how many parents got to find out all the nonsense that was being taught in school whether it be CRT or some of these other things that were being pushed, not necessarily yep. as curriculum, but in practice. And it's motivated people to run for school boards, county boards, these positions that have a direct impact on your daily life. You yep. know, so no, when you're going on about this, please do. <laughs> well, there's two, there's two things that I, I probably talk about the most in, and if anybody's listening tonight, I think that there's, um, and I'll answer Tracy's question if you if you let me, Ed. Um, By really all means. Briefly. Um, and I, so the county board level in, in in most counties in Wisconsin, I think they're all nonpartisan uh, seats. So you don't run as a Republican, you don't run as a Democrat, you don't do any of that. I, I think that obviously people wear that on their sleeve nowadays. I don't think there's any real mm -hmm. secret about where I'm leaning, but. Um, when it comes to, I would say, a little bit more um, left-leaning uh, perspective on, on the board in Pierce County right now, it's 15 to 2. I mean, that, that's right. about right. I mean, it's 17. There's 17 seats, and there's maybe one or – I know one for sure, and maybe two other people that are a little bit leaning that way. 
Um, and so it's, but like I mentioned earlier, that that is not indicative or accurate when it comes to representing the people of Pierce County. Um, right. And I think that what happens is that these board um, elections, because they are off year elections, so they're off year and they're spring elections, which mm -hmm. are impossible. So you're talking about uh, elections that are decided by a couple dozen votes, maybe. Right. And these are people that are that are representing people on the board of the, this particular county. Um, and so uh, trying to get people out to vote, period, is going to be difficult, I think, in the off year. Like you mentioned, this year is going to be, I think, a little bit easier because yeah. there's a lot of people that are more involved and more passionate. When we're looking at spring elections, though, it's a, it's a – it's going to be hard. I, I, my wife actually made me vote last year. Um, and the only reason that I voted and I'll be really honest is that I drive by my polling place on the way home. Right. And if I hadn't, I'm not sure that I would have voted last spring. Um, but obviously I'm in a different mindset now, but <laughs> it, it, it is kind of funny, especially when you live in a, in a, in a smaller town, you know, 5,000 people or less, you're going to drive yeah. by your polling place. And it's like, oh, I really don't feel like doing it, bro. It would take you literally, literally five, maybe yep. 10 minutes. If you see somebody, you know, yep. oh, maybe yeah. 10 minutes. tops. Yep. <clears throat> it's not like when you're in the twin cities, you're in Milwaukee, you go to the school, your polling place, and maybe you're there an hour or two. Yeah. Like, oh yeah. There's no, yeah, when especially in, in the more rural areas, you have no excuse. <clears throat> no, you don't. When we were in St. Paul, we'd go to our polling place and yeah, sometimes it would take us a solid hour um, or so to vote. Um, I think that I'm in and out in about four minutes when I vote right. <laughs> here, here in uh, our county and our kind of, like I said, just down the road. But um, two of the things that you would, you would mention that I guess are, are kind of passionate things for me in my heart is that um, uh, one of them is with masking. And I think that mm -hmm. this is, we're going to find out that the the cure uh, was way worse than the disease um, yep. when it comes to that. I think that the mental damage and psychological damage that's happened to our children is going to be felt for years and years and years. And we're just starting to see that. Um, there's a gentleman that his name is Ryan, Ryan Wheeler. He's running for uh, Hudson um, School Board. And he is, uh, I'm just getting to know him, really great guy. Uh, he happens to be uh, kind of heavily tattooed like myself. So we kind of get along on a lot of, a lot of things. But, yeah, but he's, he, uh, he does a lot of mentoring and has always done mentoring with like middle school, high school kids. Um, and uh, he mentioned to me just the other day that he's seeing um, emotions and suicidal thoughts and just a, a mindset of despair and loneliness um, mm -hmm. that comes from keeping your face covered all day. Yeah. And uh, my, my son, uh, all three of my kids right now are, um, have medical exemptions and they haven't worn a mask all year. Uh, won't right. let them. And, uh, but they get, they've gotten bullied for not wearing one. Um, and the, a, a story that I shared uh, on what day is today? Thursday on Tuesday. Thursday. Yeah. Uh, Kyle, yeah, I kind of keep forgetting the days of the week. They Kyle, all blend uh, together when you're running. Yeah, right. Kyle Udes came out to, we were at Mooney's Rusty Horse up in Spring Valley, Wisconsin, and a bunch of folks out there talking and stuff. And we were talking about what was most important to us and our families. And I'm really passionate about my kids. I love them. They're one of the most important things in my life. And um, I, I've told my son in particular, but my girls as well, that you, you never get to start a fight. That's not how the Kretzmans work. Um, you don't get to walk in, kick the door down, and and start to pick a fight with somebody. That's not that is not how our faith teaches us to act. That's not how right. um, they are. But I'll tell you what: if somebody comes up to you and they start to pick a fight, then I'll never, I'll always back you up. You know, I'll I'll always say that if somebody's pounding on your chest, it's all right to stand up for yourself and say that's not right. And um, when you asked me earlier, what, like, what's my motivation for running or was, was there a moment? I get that question often of like, was there a light bulb moment of like, man, I, I maybe I need to step up and run for something. It yeah. was a minute when I was talking to my kids about bullying, um, and how, uh, that if they get into a, some kind of tussle or a mess mm -hmm. because somebody was bullying you, I'll support you all day long. Right. And I realized that I was talking to myself. I'm done of being bullied 
uh, with masks and with mandates and with ordinances and being told what's non-essential and what isn't. And somebody coming into my space on my property in my face and telling me what I can and can't do. Um, I just, it gets, like I said, it gets the blood boiling. And so uh, it, the, and it, I, my wife and I were talking about how maybe there's a better word than bully uh, to use, but I'm not sure that in the past, you know, 18, 19 months, there's a better word to use. Well, I think that's probably a, a very good word that covers that. It's an overall word that covers everything that that's gone on because you can say shaming, you can say they're yeah. ostracized and you can say all that. But at the end of the day, really, and I'm actually glad you brought that up because I'll be honest, I hadn't even thought about it in that frame. Yeah, they're little, yeah, they're bullying you. They they want you to feel bad. Uh, you yeah. take a look at various cities like New York, Chicago in particular, Mary Lori Lightfoot, when she instituted the restrictions at the beginning of the year, she outright said. We're doing this to make it uncomfortable to you. Yep. You know, um, who is that? Mario, not Mario Cuomo, um, the block mayor of New York, you know, get your jab. So that way, you know, you can get your Excelsior pass, the keys to the city. Yep. Didn't realize I needed a key to the city unless I happened to be like, I don't know, celebrated. Like I saved a kitten or something. Yeah. <laughs> Didn't realize I needed that. Yeah, so really. I, I think that bullying is probably the best thing, and it's really a word that I think resonates with kids too. Yeah, it. I think I think it does, and and a lot of adults too that experienced it. I mean, I, I, I think I was I had a pretty decent childhood, um, but there was moments, man, that I had people pushing me around, and I didn't like it. Yeah, and I think that that's. I mean, I'm. I think that I I'm pr probably more of a libertarian at heart, um, mm -hmm. very much a tread on me type of thing. I got a gads the flag out front. Um, of my house. And I just want, I want people to respect my liberty and my freedom. Yep. Um, and I'll do the same for you. But I think that there's a responsibility to that, that I think it's maybe glossed over when it's this matter of, well, you don't, I'm not, you know, I'm not going to say that you need to wear a mask or get a vaccine for you, but you need to do it. You're required to do it for somebody else. You right. have to do it to protect somebody else. Well, that's not my responsibility. Um, I'll tell you what, it's not the government's responsibility to tell me that. I will right. do that. I'll take care of my neighbors. I'll take care of the, the people in my community. I will because that's my responsibility as like a free citizen of our country, our county, our city. That's what I do. Um, mm -hmm. that, or that's what we're supposed to do, right? Like that, that, that we're called to do that type of thing. And so uh, when we talk about, um, you know, uh, the whole idea of, it, of, of bullying, I don't know. It just, it gets me worked up. And, and, and I, I think you're right. It's something that people are, it's resonating with people that they say, you know, that that's exactly what's been going on. And it's yeah. time to, it's time to change it. When I think it's a, it's an interesting concept when you look at the idea of looking out for your neighbor um, and somebody can quote, you know, correct me on this, but you know, there is this passage biblically where they talk about being your brother's keeper. Yeah. Okay. There is truth in that to a certain extent. Like, I don't expect you to go out and wear cold weather gear to keep me warm. Just the yep. same. I don't expect you to go get, you know, whatever on my behalf. My my safety, my well-being, that is on me. Yep. It shouldn't fall on the shoulders of others. You know, and, and if you look at any civilized society, really, it is a social contract. It's this idea that, hey, we're living under certain rules. We try to look out for one another. We don't commit crimes against each other. We look out so that we can all thrive together. Um, but I feel like over the last two years, and especially on the county levels, in, in more, other counties more so than some others, they've taken that concept of the social contract and you know, per, you know, know, responsibility for the community and really just pushed that envelope to a whole nother level. Yep. You know, where it's like, my God, if what you're telling me, if I don't put a mask on, I could potentially kill you. And I wish yep. I was being hyperbolic about that, but I've actually yep. heard people say that to me. And I'm like, where that's that's not how this works at all. Where did you get this? But it's Dr. It's Fauci. So remember, <laughs> don't challenge him, you challenge science. Yeah, or yeah, right. He's the voice of God. I think that the, <laughs> the, the because it's it's flipped. That's not, that's the opposite of how that, of how that normally works. Yeah. And uh, again, I, I, I agree. And I think that I do get challenged on that sometimes when it's like, Martin, obviously you don't believe in any kind of rules or laws or what about, you know, all that. It's like, that's not at all true. I don't, I don't feel like that at all. I'm, I'm a, I'm a student and a, 
a firm believer in our fundamental constitutional law. And that, mm-hmm. that's something that has to be applied equally to everybody, regardless of what they look like, regardless of what they believe, right. regardless of, of what God they bow to, all that. And so, but within that, I think that within our, the foundations of our country comes, like I mentioned, I mean, I, I don't know what a different way to say it. It comes, there's a responsibility for caring for your neighbor that I don't need anybody to make that a law that nobody has to say to me, you need to take care of your neighbor. Otherwise I'm going to punish you. And you're going to take care right. of your neighbor by you, by wearing a mask, by being vaccinated, by keeping your, your restaurant or your bar, or your rate, your retail closed for some matter because you're protecting people. Mm-hmm. And, I, and I, I just don't get it. And I, I do feel like there's some kind of awakening happening right now. Yes. Um, I think that there, it's a good thing. And I love it that, that for me, there's, I'm very driven by my faith. I'm a, I'm a lifelong Lutheran um, okay. and Christian. And I <clears throat> use that, excuse me. Um, a friend of mine, Matt talks about, he, he challenged me recently to say, Martin, what is your true North? Like, where do you, where do you find your direction? Where, where do you mm. get it? Where does it come from you in the, from the inside? And for me, that comes from, from my faith. And it, right. there's an interesting moment right now where that my faith and my political worldview are converging on the word freedom. And what mm-hmm. does that mean? And I'm interested in sharing that with everybody that doesn't understand it, get it, or they're too asleep to, to, to maybe get that full realization. And so I, I go back and my wife hates the analogy, but I love the movie, the matrix and all those movies. <laughs> and there's not they them like, you know, I'm 47 years old. And so that was my jam. Yep. Um, but there there's, uh, tell me that's not exactly what's going on right now with so many people that are just asleep and plugged in that are very comfortable in that stat because being oh, fully awakened in the cold reality of understanding what our government is doing for them or to them is painful. Yeah. No, I think you're absolutely correct because the parallels that you see from the matrix and those that are still plugged into the system, you see yep. that with the people that are like, well, I'm going to go get my jab. Yep. Okay. Did you talk to your doctor? No, I just stuck my arm out at the McDonald's. Yep. Let me know how the experiment works out for you. Uh, yep. You know, you see people that just buy into the hype. Uh, you buy into whatever you're being told on TV, CNN, whatever you're hearing from your county board medical office. And I don't want to dis- have people disregard certain things, but, you know, you have to use your critical thinking skills when yep. you're doing that. I find the people that aren't doing that, these are the people that want somebody else to make decisions for them. And it's interesting because when you take a look over the last, I'd say, 125 to 150 years, Human society is just brutal. I mean, it just always has been historically. But when you look at the last, like I said, 125 to 150, the Industrial Revolution, the rising of the middle class, there's been so much here to just improve qualities of life. I think there's so many people that they take it as this is the way it's always been. Mm. So they're plugged into this. And rather than live the dangerous life of having that dangerous freedom, they would much rather have somebody tell them what to do, even if that means being compliant and shucking away some rights because I really don't need a gun. The cops will be here for me. I really don't need to, you know, do I really need to speak out about this? I mean, do I really yeah. And, and I think and people it, are just, they're happy comfort. being told yeah. what to do. Yep. yep. You're right. I think, I think that there's a, a, a comfort in that because I, and, and the, the struggle is, is that is where government's most dangerous is when you get people compliant and not asking questions. And I'm not, and I'm not, I don't want to have this be misconstrued at all. Like I, I'm not You're about anti-government. Birth. Oh my God. Yeah. yeah, yeah that I'm not, type of nonsense. I'm not anti anything. And man, I go, right. we've been to a lot of school board meetings in the past year and a half, and I get called all kinds of names anti vax, anti mask. Mm-hmm. And I said, like, not a chance. I'm all I'm saying is that there has to be a choice. And why not ask the question? Yeah. Why not ask the question where we're coming from, where we're going, what's the purpose? And, and have somebody say, I need more information for me. I don't just because you say it's okay. I, that that doesn't mean anything to me, right? Just because you say I need to do it, and and I've struggled with that because I have got immediate family members that that 
are are the exact opposite of that. And I said, well, I saw it on the news, so I'm cool. Why would I have any reason to distrust our government or the, or the news? I mean, they, they take care of me. They love me, right? Our government cares about me, and they want the best for me. And I just want to open a history shape. book at that point. Yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. And so my my big thing is that there has to always be a choice. Mm-hmm. And there always needs to be some kind of informed consent because that is what our constitution is based on is informed consent. And it's our responsibility to ask big, important questions of our federal government, of our statewide government, of our local government, and even of our school boards. We have to be asking the questions and have a voice, even if they say no. All right. At least we were able to ask the question and get involved. That's, that's, that's where I come from is yeah. that we have to have a voice and the right to ask questions. Well, you mentioned the school boards, and I, I think that's something, you know, to get into because obviously school boards run independent of the county boards, but there is yep. certainly some inter- inter- overlapping issues that happen there. Yep. And um, I don't know if you're familiar with the young lady, Scarlett Johnson. Uh, she was running for the Mequon school board uh, during the recall here just uh, a few months back. She's running again here for the spring election. And... Um, she's a big proponent on getting parents to be active in school boards. So she's running for that, that election one more time. But it's an interesting concept that the schools that we've always had, and there, we can make the argument what schools are for now versus what they used to be. But in all cases, the schools were always meant to be acting in what's called in local parentis. It meant in lieu of the parent. So God forbid your kids at school falls and breaks an arm. You kind of want the the school to say, hey, let's call 911 and get Johnny hooked up here with the cast. I don't think any parent's going to say otherwise. But it's almost like they've taken that authority for that short amount of time they're in school and see and just try to absorb more like, you know what? And there was apparently a uh, state representative who made some kind of outlandish comment today. Uh, The idea. uh, I saw that. Yeah. It's not grass. Mm Mm-hmm. But yep. they, they've taken this idea, this what should be a good concept, and try to extrapolate it to the point where we know better for your kids than you. You're just yep. a placeholder, which is absolutely ridiculous. And that's why I think there's definitely overlap because you got school boards, you got the county boards, you got the dealing okay. with, you know, these edicts that are coming down, whether from the state level or at the county level. Um, yep. How would you build relationships with folks like that? Well, I think that, and and that's a part of it is that there has to be an understanding that because we don't we don't necessarily agree on some larger philosophical um, topics that we can't have an, a a good discourse and actual civil conversations about what's up and the, and the I was just chatting with um, with a woman that's uh, running for school board in River Falls and she talks about that's her goal is just to have a civil calm collect conversation about what's happening right now and how decisions are made and it's mm-hmm. almost impossible <clears throat> yeah. it's almost impossible and so i and i know that maybe my i mean i know that i'm a non kind of a non-traditional looking candidate and maybe sounding a little bit non-traditional but i i, I think that it it begin it end, it begins and it ends with how we treat each other and and also how we develop relationships and so i, I think it's a big it's a big ask to say, how do we develop relationships between the statewide government, between countywide government, and then school boards? There has to be something. There has to be because we we all have to work together to try to to make the most sense of what's going on. And the way that happens, in my opinion, is with a balanced view, um, right. where you have people of a of maybe even opposing, certainly different, but opposing viewpoints that can sit at the same table. And God forbid, there's some kind of compromise. You know, that, that's that's become a dirty word in and of itself. There's a gentleman that's sure. on the, uh, the River Falls School Board again. Um, God bless him, man. He tries so hard to compromise. And I, I struggle with it myself because I'm like, nobody's going to compromise. It, it, you look right. at the extreme viewpoints and one side's going to bully the other until they get their way. Um, so it's it's a it's no, it's no easy task. There's no doubt. Yeah. Well, and that's that's the hard part that I'm looking at this, you know, whether you're talking county or state. Um, when you're dealing with committed leftists, and that's I'm gonna call them what they are, they've gotten where they've gotten to by not compromising. I mean, they yeah. they do everything they can to vilify whoever they're against, whatever position they're taking. If you're on the opposite end of it, they don't care. Yeah. Um, so I think this is something that how do you you know it's that question of how do you 
try to meet with and talk to somebody who doesn't want to talk to you. You know, they just, they're set in their ways. That's it. And you're a bad person. I'm like, wait a minute. I'm just trying to present a different perspective here. Yep. Whatever happened, the idea of coming up with a hybrid of ideas, putting our heads together, doing what's best for the community. And that's where I think a lot of this has gotten lost. And you do have some people on the right that do that from time to time, but it's nothing to what we see coming from the other side of the aisle on that. Yep. Now, I want to ask you about this because I think this is almost more in line with where you're coming from. What we're seeing a lot with a lot of candidates all through the state, we're seeing what I'm calling the rise of the populist candidate. It's mm -hmm. almost in the model of Trump, but it's not quite Trump. Whereas Trump would want to fight everybody. I'm seeing yeah. new candidates come up here and you pick and choose your battles and call it like it is. Maybe you're a right-leaning libertarian. Maybe you're a libertarian. Maybe you're that conservative that's been disaffected from you know Republican circles. Yeah. Doesn't matter. These are fighters that are coming out here. And I wanted to get your thoughts on that. Well, I think that one of the things that was a struggle for me with with Donald Trump is that it was just a, it was such a, a cult of personality, and it wasn't. And what got caught up in that, what got lost in that is some of the amazing things that he did as a president were completely overshadowed sh overshadowed because people just hated yeah. him. And so, and, and right now I'm, I'm sure the same thing is true with, uh, with president Biden. I'm struggling to find some positive things to say right now. I'm sure that there's good stuff going on, but I, nobody's paying attention because they're so concerned about everything else. And so the, the populist thing is a, is an interesting viewpoint. And it's certainly not where I'm coming from, I guess, because I'm, I, I, I'm most interested in, in again, rep truly representing the people of my district in Pierce County. And right. that's one of the things that Kyle Eudes and I talk about probably the most when we, when we connect. And he's, I mean, I, you couldn't ask for somebody better to be running for lieutenant governor right now, in my opinion, mm -hmm. um, than Kyle. And he talks about things like, number, number one, as a, somebody running for office, you never want to promise anything. Right. Um, because you're one voice amongst many. Um, the, the things that I promise... Um, at least so far have is I, I've said things like I will never uh, vote in favor of a lockdown or a mandate. I won't do it. Um, I, I, you know, I'm never going to walk in and say, well, I'm going to lower taxes. What I want. That's, you know, it, okay, great. That, that all sounds good. And whatever that means. That worked out <laughs> real good for Bush 41, by the way. That yeah. I throw that one in there. Yeah. No exactly. new taxes. Okay. Yeah. Whoops. But the thing that, that, that Kyle and I talked about was that he said, um, it, you, are interested in, he's like, what, what I'm hearing you say and what you're most passionate about is re representing the people of your district and giving them an, an honest, true representation, knowing where I come from, because obviously I got my perspective. I have my opinion, right. you know, on what's up and what we need to do in the direction we need to go. Um, but what I think is missing right now in the county board and, um, and well, our federal government for sure, is that I think there's a straight up movement to ignore the will of the people. Mm -hmm. and, I, and i've seen it i've watched it happen you know and and it's like well so six people are going to make a decision um to represent a county of forty thousand people you know it's it's it will be 17 for the for the county board um there's no there's no freaking way that that represents the the desires and the and the wills of of uh of the people of pierce county so right. it's a, that populist candidate thing that's a tricky that's some tricky business well, it's it's an interesting thing because I think there's two philosophies when it comes to representation. Um, there's one line of thinking that says, I'm the candidate. You elected me based upon my yeah. platform, what I told you I was going to run on. So therefore, you're trusting me to make these decisions on these bills and talk these things through. You're, you're, you voted for my judgment. The yeah. other side is... We voted for you. You're supposed to be doing the will of the people. Yep. With larger populations, I think that's just harder because obviously, what are you going to do? Poll people on every different thing. Yep. Um, but those are the two major outlining philosophies. And I think with, a, with most anything, the probably the best way of trying to represent the people is probably somewhere in the middle. Yep. Because, yes, yeah, trust me on this because I've kind of done – the research but you know what i need these town hall meetings because without getting the barometer from you folks yep i don't know what you guys want i need you guys to talk to me and really i think that's really what the people of wisconsin are wanting 
so yep. much, whether it's on a smaller scale, all the way up to the governor's office, they want to know that they have a voice at the table, that the people that are representing them truly represent them. And, and just to listen, you know, that's the thing. It's like, so what do you do with, with, when you give somebody a voice, you actually have to listen to it. Right. And so the, 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 the thing that, that I think that, that that's a big part of that, because that there, I, I agree, there's two sides of that. And when you have something that has a strong kind of point of view right now that I, that I think that I do, um, there is that balance of saying, well, if I get elected, I'm confident that I will. Um, I'm going to use that as my barometer. Mm -hmm. But I also understand that if I'm not listening to the people of my district in Pierce County, then right. I'm not doing the job of an elected official, period. That's not the way that it right. works. And that's what I struggle the most with when I when I see people that are in those positions, when it's like, you're not even listening. You're not giving us the time of day. There's no consideration. And so at least give us the courtesy of the appearance of <laughs> Just listening. pretend you're listening. That's all I need just to do, pretend. Yeah. Just pretend. There, there's another, there's a woman that's running for a district, uh, shoot, maybe 16 here in mm. Pierce County that has shared similar things to me. We went to some board meetings and we're just shocked by the behavior of the board, belittling, mocking, making yeah. fun of, turning off cameras and microphones and talking about people in the public while they're talking and just ridiculing people for coming up. And it's like, so not are you not only listening, you're making it, you're giving us, it's contempt, it's disdain right. that people that live in your community are telling you, that what they're passionate about, what they feel about, that's not right. That's never right. Vote how you're going to vote, but at least freaking listen. Does your community have, and I see this with a lot of small towns, um, they have like one family name that's in there, prominent family. They may have been there for like three, four generations. They're the ones that got the money. There's usually a family member that's a DA or a judge. Usually a few of them are on the board. Um, yeah. but they're kind of like the big money in there. And granted, nobody, two counties outside of where they live, know who they are, but in that County yeah. boy, there's something. Oh, it's yeah. like they have their own little fiefdoms here. Oh yeah. Do you guys have something similar to that? You know, the forever board member. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not certain of the, of the, of at a, at the, like a County level, I think mm. in the community for sure. Um, right. Like I said, we've got to know a lot of people really quick that our neighbors were are really involved in River Falls area and in Pierce County. And so they've connected us, my family and me. Um, that was terrible grammar, by the way. Um, to, <laughs> it's a Gen X thing. We'll, we'll, we'll yeah, let it slide. Yeah, I don't know. I'll just make it up. Right. Um, connecting, <laughs> connecting us with other people in the community. And sure, there's there's names. What's funny to yeah. me is when you have somebody that will have a, a, a very well-known name, there's a park, there's a road, there's a whatever. Right. And they'll be like, they'll, they'll like drop that. And so I'm supposed to like, oh, I mean, well, best. yeah, I, I, that, that means nothing to me. Great. Your, your great, great grandfather <laughs> was here and they helped build the town hall or whatever. You're, that's fantastic. Right. I didn't mean anything to me. So I think that there are those players in town. I'm sure there are at the board level too. I just, I'm, it's not even on my radar. Right. The reason I asked that, cause I got to wonder how much will that hamstring some of the, the efforts from yourself and others like you that are trying to move things along to a more constitutional perspective. That's actually representing the people. Um, but you know, that'll be an interesting thing to see. I think not just with Pierce County, but my County with Shara and the various other rural counties, you know, cause I, I, I guess I have a I have a big spot for rural rural Wisconsin. Um, yeah. I've been out here for the past seven, yeah, it's been like six seven years now, yeah. and um, I love it out here. I wouldn't trade it for the world. I was telling you off air earlier, you couldn't yeah. pay me to move back to Milwaukee. Yeah. You couldn't pay me to move back to a big city. The folks out here are phenomenal, and I think they definitely deserve the best representation they can get. And, I'm, and I've, I've already started to do it a little bit, and I think almost unintentionally just because I'm interested. Um, but I've, I'm, I've done a few already, and I plan on doing more between now and April than after when I'm elected. I call it my listening and yelling tour where I'm going to <laughs> the different – and it's bars, really. It's bars and, yeah. bars and restaurants and coffee shops in Pierce County and outside of Pierce County and a lot outside my district. I'm just interested 
I'm interested in hearing what people are talking about, what they're frustrated with, what they're excited about. I could care less if you agree with me or not. I'm, that's not, that's not even my point. I'm, I'm interested in just learning more about what is important to the people of Pierce County. And yeah. so uh, Darlene just wrote, she said, you know, that, that Senator Johnson um, is going to be doing or does some listening sessions. I mean, yep. that of, of course he should be and uh, that everybody should be and that, the difference with the board, I think with county level board people is that if this wouldn't be going on, I probably won't even know who my represent representative is in that seat, much less want to get involved. There's people that have been on the board for years and years and years and years and years that just do it because they do it. Right. Um, but I'm, but if you're not listening to what people are saying and what they're frustrated with, and what they're excited about, what they what are important to them, then what are we doing? So my goal between now and in, in, uh, in April is that at least three times a week, and I mean that because we're talking about, you know, we're only talking about eight weeks before the election or so, Yeah, is that I'm in my community listening to people posting up at bars and in coffee shops, and I'm going to be at the bowling alley, I think, once this weekend, uh, St. Croix Lanes in, in River Falls, just to listen. And if one person shows up and talks to me, cool. If nobody does, whatever. If 10 people do. Right. But if I'm elected and when I'm elected, I should need to stop saying if, Ed, because it's going to happen. Make you win, yeah. That is a is that that I'm not going to stop that if I'm if I get in office. In fact, it's going to be a major part of what I'm doing is mm -hmm. to make sure that I'm still in touch and understand what the people in my district and Pierce County are thinking about and what's heavy on their hearts and minds. And I'm going to continue right. to do that all the time. When I think it's an important thing is to have conversation not yep. confrontation and don't yep. get me wrong i'm all about confrontation i mean i'll i'll, yep. I'll have it with the best of them um, yep. but if i'm gonna have a confrontation i need i have a strategy on why i'm doing it and i'm not carpet bombing things because yeah, i know sure. a lot of people like to just kind of throw things out there but by having these these dialogues these conversations getting to understand even if you could all you could do is agree to disagree even yep. if all you can do is, you know, hey, let's talk, let's sit down, let's have a drink, let's share a pizza, and the yep. bars and the supper clubs, man, th those are the social clubs out here. Yep. You know, this is where people communicate. This is where the stories are told. This is where you don't know who you're going to run into. You might run into the janitor. You might run into one of the board members. You don't know. Yep. And that's the crazy part. Because and, and so many of these small businesses, man, they I know they just appreciate that kind of business. No, and it's I I think it's so important. It's it's a it's a a friend of mine, uh, James, who lives across the river in Minnesota. You, you know, we're still friends, even though that I'm over here, he's over there. Is that he? Uh, in November, I had uh, some. Uh, I invited about thirty people over to my neighbor's place. Um, to talk about, does it make him, do I have enough support? Am I talking about the right things to run for county board supervisor? Right. And um, it, it's in the middle of, again, a little bit rural part of town. They, they actually turned their garage into a bar, uh, which is amazing. <laughs> and so we kind of hung out there for several hours and talked and a lot of people shared and we left and James sent me a, a, a note and he said, man, that I, that could have been in 1775 in somewhere on the East coast with a bunch of people talking about the, the, the tyrannical King George, right. You know, it was this foundational uh, movement that happens uh, at, at, at those kind of places. And so mm -hmm. it's, that's my jam. That's the, you know, we, we can post up at any bar in town and people know who I am, but it's right. about listening and, and understanding what the people are most passionate about and their concerns. And that what I struggle with in, in River Falls particularly, and I've gotten kicked off of most of the Facebook community pages um, in town um, because the, they, they, they've literally said, I refuse to agree to disagree about certain things. So if we don't, if you do not agree with me, then you're banned, kicked out, silenced, done. It's we funny how that works, isn't it? Oh my Right. And it's like, what are you talking about? That that's, that's ridiculous. Of course we can agree to disagree. That's, that's how we're supposed to work. Right. Is that if we don't agree on something, then we got to talk it out a little bit um, and at least understand where somebody's coming from. And that's where I, that's where I kind of land is like, you and I don't need to agree. Um, Ed, I've, I've been following you a little bit. I've watched your podcast. I've followed your social. Thank you, sir. What? 
Yeah, absolutely. But I got, I'll tell you what, we don't agree on, on everything, and I love it. That's what makes it interesting. That's what makes the, that's what it's all about is understand. But I can see where you're coming from, and I know a little right. bit of your history. And then it's like, okay, I get a perspective. I see that. I see where you're coming from. I'm with it. I don't agree with it. And that's right. yeah, and that's the beautiful thing about it. You don't have to agree with it, but if you can get an understanding, okay, this is where they're coming from and why. This is their position, yep. and here's how they outline it. Boom. Yep. Cool. Here's my rebuttal. Cool. Respect that. Now let's go get a drink. Yeah. You know? exactly. <laughs> I mean, it's like, yep. Because the, the, the funniest part about that, and especially like that when I see it on the right or right leaning libertarians, because they can get like that sometimes with each other too. Oh, yeah. You know, ban all abortions. Yes, I agree. But, you know, there's nuance here. No, there's no nuance. Okay, listen, settle down. <laughs> and, it's like, are, are we going to fight? Like, I'm, I'm kind of old, so I really don't have time for this. That's right. And, uh, yeah, it's like, I, I, I stopped doing that like <laughs> years ago. But you you want to kind of get to that point where you're, you're having the conversation. You're going point to point to point. But everybody has the same goal. It's funny yep. because everybody wants to get to Rome. Everybody just finds different roads to get there. Why is there? Yep. I'm look, I look at it right now. I, I'm, I've been really trying to pay attention to – uh, all the statewide candidates, especially because we have such an interesting wide yeah. array of people, especially now that um, we have some new people that have kind of thrown in for governor, um, you know, and whatnot. And uh, my wife and I and some friends of mine went to uh, an event for Jonathan Wickman. Um, yeah. He was here in town and we left and man, he's, he said some great things, some amazing things. There's a couple things that I wasn't, you know, a hundred percent on board with him, mm -hmm. just like anybody um, but we left and my wife and I were talking on the way home and I said, a lot of the things that Jonathan was sharing is hard. It's hard to even make political because the things, a lot of stuff he was talking about were basic fundamental things to our country and right. that those they're not political. They shouldn't be. They're not left or right. They're, they're we're talking about what is the foundation of our country. Not, not that people can't interpret it differently or whatever, but when we talk about what is most important and sacred, when we talk about our individual rights or individual freedoms, mm -hmm. medical freedom, sovereignty, those kind of things, that's that's basic fundamental stuff. My One of the stories I tell my kids all the time, they're sick of hearing it, <laughs> driving east to west into downtown St. Paul. There used yeah. to be a, a billboard. It's not there anymore. White Bear Avenue in 94. There was a billboard. I think it was for like Park Nicollet Clinic or something like that. Um, this would have been maybe six, eight months ago. And it had a, a picture of a nurse. I think it was a nurse or a doctor in a mask. And it said the, these words. It said, the we is always greater than the me. Mm, collectivism and at its best. I about ran into it with my car. Because, and I get it. Like, I think if we're looking at maybe what kind of pizza to order, I'm with that. You know, the <laughs> we, does everybody want pepperoni? Cool. Where are right. we going to go for vacation this year? I hear that. Family discussions, I hear that. Um, when it comes to the direction of our, of our local elected government, our federal government, and when our president says that none of this is about, you know, your individual personal rights, it makes me, it gets me angry because that, that's the basis of our government. The, the we is never greater than the me. The individual no. rights are the most important. But like I mentioned earlier, with that comes a responsibility to help take care of your neighbors and then keep an eye out for the, for the, we, the quote unquote, we, you know? Yeah. And I think you're absolutely right about that. There's so many topics that are out there and it doesn't matter if they're politic, you know, in the realm of uh, politics or cultural pop culture, whatever. It's a lot of things that shouldn't be political. Yep. But I, I say this many times, I respect hustle and the left have, have literally made everything political and they have, yeah turned it upside down i mean when when you're having to argue about the foundation of the country and then you have another group that comes in here and says no the country was founded in 1619 and they bring about all this other nonsense it's like whoa we, we, where did this come from yep well you dig in a little more you can see where it came from and you find out how insidious it is but yeah we shouldn't be arguing about stuff like that you would think that we have shared values I think yep. the problem is, is that some people are, they bought into that victimhood mentality, this, yep. you know, us versus them, you know, the bad one percenters. Yep. And here's the comedy of that, by the way. 
if you make over $34,000, you are in the top 1% on the planet. Sure. You're not yeah. rich in it by American standards. Take that 34K to most any other country. Yep. You're rich. You're rich. Yep. And so, all right, sir. Well, let's wrap this up here. We got Dan <laughs> over here, Badger State Resistance. Dan's a trip. I had a chance to talk to him a couple weeks ago. If you ever get a chance yeah. to connect with them, these guys are awesome. Yeah, I was able but, to. Uh, I was on Badger State Resistance podcast with Justin um, yep. maybe a month ago or so. And uh, I'll tell you what. Talk about some uh, some fearless guys, man. It's they're putting it out there, and I, I envy that that kind of courage because they're saying stuff that a lot of that's unpopular stuff, but it's truth. Right. Um, and, and that's kind of what we what we need right now. And um, you, you know, like you mentioned real quick, and it's something that I, I say often is that um, when 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 people have responded to the things that I've talked about or read and they say martin you know what i was with you until you said freedom i was with you until you said liberty i was with you until you were talking about individual rights and those are just red flags for me man i don't know it just it smacks to this weird extremist thing and i'm like what what are you talking about that's that's not extreme you when know did that when, become an extremist ideology exactly and what if you're gonna call uh if you're gonna call me an extremist all right I guess, I guess I'm with that then. If if the, our basic fundamental constitutional rights makes me an extremist, yikes. Uh, if that's where we are, then I, I guess I'll wear that, you know, I guess I'll wear that badge that, you know, when we were going to school boards, I don't think I've been to a school board meeting that I haven't talked at. Right. I haven't gotten up and caused a little bit of, you know, anxiety for people on the board. Um, and I'm labeled a domestic terrorist now because I'm just talking about what I'm concerned about and saying, hey, some of this stuff doesn't sit well with me. Uh, um, thank you, Merrick Garland, for that garbage. None of that makes any sense, right? No. It just it it just doesn't. And so I'm all about people asking good questions and and trying to shake things up a bit. And that's my, I, you know, we talk about these lofty things, Ed, and I, I think that I get lost in it too because it's like, well, what what can, what does that do for a county level supervisor? What are you talking about, freedom and liberty mm -hmm. and all this? Stuff? That's it's nonsense. And I and I get that to a point. I think that if people understand where my where my worldview is and what my passions are. Yep. And they know that guides my head and my heart. And then they can trust that as long as I'm listening to them, then I'll make the the right decisions that represent them at the county level. And so I just, I appreciate your time. I and mean, we've been going a while tonight and I appreciate that. No, but it's like and, it's important stuff. And, and I would, but no, and I want, and I want to invite you back anytime. If I'm on the air, uh, anytime you want to jump on, you know what? You, you're always welcome to come on. <laughs> I appreciate that. I want to throw one other thing here um, because it, something you said just now really struck home with me. I think for the most part, people, there's a lot of people that are right of center and I'm going to expose myself as a nerd here, um, <laughs> but I, I'm, I'm the nerd that'll punch you in the head just for calling me a nerd. Um, okay. But noted, you know, I, I was <laughs> that kid that like loved comic books back in the day. So when the Avengers movie came out, like, you know, here I am, like 40 something. I'm all geeked up because it's a comic book come to life. Right. Yep. But the Hulk was always an interesting character because what was the biggest thing about the Hulk was he just wanted to be left alone. He didn't yep. want to be bothered. He just wanted to take a nap. And then people had to mess with him. And then they were yep. mad because Hulk went smash. <laughs> yeah. And I find a lot of people right a center. That's really where we want to be. We just want to be left alone. We want to raise a family. We want to, you know, pay our taxes, take the trash out. We want to take care of our communities. We want to live our best lives with as minimal government interference as possible. And I think by having individuals like yourself running for these, you know, board supervisor positions and taking a serious look at these county positions that are out there, Regard, you know, regarding mandates or any other thing that might pass for the betterment or the detriment of the community. Sure. These are things we need to highlight. So I can't thank you enough for being on here tonight. No, I, I really appreciate it. And to be honest, this is so new to me that it's helping me work some of the stuff out too. Yeah. You know, the, more, the, the more I talk about it and people ask me good questions, then it's like, wow, I didn't, I didn't necessarily think about that from that perspective before. And and again, I get wrapped up in my my localness too, and so mm -hmm. um, also talking to some people from around the state is really important to me. 
and hearing what else is going on in the state. And I, I don't have any aspirations or big, you know, goals for anything beyond this. I'm open to what right. God's doing for me, but I'm finding that, and I don't think that's unique to me, Ed. I think that some of the things that I'm talking about and I'm being unafraid about talking about are resonating with other people. And you mentioned earlier, I, I build guitars. That's one of the things I yeah. do. Um, I, I love playing the guitar. It's there's music. Uh, music is healing in my opinion. Yep. Um, and that's, that's a part of the reason, one of the reasons I do what I do. Um, but in, in music, uh, especially with instruments, stringed instruments, what makes an instrument, uh, sing is mm. the, the resonation of that vibration through the materials. And so, yeah. um, when you pluck a string on a guitar, it resonates through the bridge to the top, it makes a speaker, then the sound comes out Yeah, and the, the louder you play, the louder, louder it is. And I think that the things that, that I'm talking about, we're talking about are yeah. they resonate with people right now and it hits them in the heart and in their head. And so I, I really appreciate, I kind of bugged you to kind of get on a little bit. No, a And little I'm bit. glad you did because we were, supposed, we were supposed to connect. And just so everybody knows, yeah. we were supposed to connect. Like I think it was two or three weeks ago. Yeah. And yeah. <laughs> oh my God, that day was horrible for me. Cause like, I think I got maybe three, four hours of sleep. Cause I have like these little bouts of insomnia. Oh, then geez. on top of that, what should have been like a eight or nine hour day ended up being a 12 hour day. So I was yeah. just getting in the door when <laughs> I should have been like gearing up over here. So yeah. I'm just like, son of a biscuit eater. Damn. And then you're seeing my messages like, who is this guy? I forgot all no. about him. <laughs> well, no, you, I knew who you were, you know, cause yeah. I, I, I keep an eye on your stuff too, because when I see <laughs> people that are running and it's like, okay, I'm digging the message and, you know, I got the notepad, so I'm always like, wow, that was kind of funky. Yeah. But I got the notepad, so I'm always taking notes over here. It's kind of ridiculous how many pads, <laughs> notepads I have around here. But you keep an eye on so certain folks because you're seeing their message. You're seeing what they're putting yeah. out there. You're seeing the content. And it's like, okay, this is strong. You know, let's keep eyes on this. Let's get them on, have conversations. Because you kind of know it's like, man, this is going to be something really good. And yeah. you want to bring this out to the people. And then, of course, life happens, and here we yeah, are, like right. two well, later. So I get this no, message. No, but it's, hey, it's, man, it's I want to get on. I'm like, yeah, cool. I know. I, was, I, I guess I'm the bully here, but it no, was like it was not no, like that at all. No, but it's like it's important to me because the, I'm I'm really trying to find a way to speak to uh, a lot of younger people in Pierce County, yep. just to try to get those people to vote. Because, like we mentioned, the trying to get younger people under 30 to vote period right now is a difficult time during major elections. Off year yeah. is difficult. Springtime is almost impossible. So I'm doing everything. I'm door knocking. I'm doing ma like old school mailing. I got stuff yep. coming up in the County Journal and Herald. I'm trying to get out to and meet as many people as possible. I'm also trying to take advantage of technology and what it's doing for us and trying yeah. to get that message out there because it has to. I, I got. I'm trying to hit everybody kind of where they're at. So this platform is is amazing and and I again I just appreciate the time and I'll I'll come on whenever. Whenever you you want to listen now, to me talk. Anytime. You know, it's funny you <laughs> mentioned the technology thing here because I've talked to several candidates and I'm like, you do realize whoever wields social media, like in you know, the geek side again, whoever, yeah. if you use social media like a Jedi uses a lightsaber, you're going to win. Yeah. Because that's what's really going to push a lot of people over the top. Because nobody and watches TV. What's that? No, and I'm just agreeing. Yep. You know, very few people watch, you know, network television anymore. Most people, you know, a lot of people are pulling the plug. I haven't had yep. cable in like, I don't know, seven years, eight years. Um, yep. Maybe you can watch, listen to a little AM, FM radio. Maybe you can't. Nobody reads sure. the newspaper anymore. Yep. Most people get their stuff online. And sometimes that's bad because if you're just reading headlines, but the video format, the audio formats, that's kind of where it's at. So that's why I said anybody who's running for an office, I want you on. And if you've Ooh. already been, uh, you know, on, I want you on again. So <laughs> sweet. Well, I, again, I appreciate it very much. I do. All right, brother. Um, obviously, we got the your website here. Yep. Give us a last minute pitch here. The time is yours. I'll put. I got your links out here, and I'll keep them posted up. The for me right now, the, a lot of like-minded uh, people in my community and parents. I've been struggling with a lot of the same things the past year and a half. And I'll tell you what, it's now is the time to make a difference. The, the opportunity starts now, spring election, then next November. 
This is the, all the time that we've been talking about, all the struggles that we've had. It's time to make a difference right now. So it, it's important to, to not only vote in your spring election, but know who the people are that you're voting for, um, because the, these people represent you um, in your every single day. And so for me, um, District 8, that's my heart. That's where I'm at. That's my goal is to represent the people of District 8 very well um, and, to, and to be passionate about it and make, a, make kind of a big noise in Pierce County right now. Um, yeah, my website, Kretzmanfor8.com has a way to help me uh, with some campaign finance stuff too, because it, it isn't cheap. Um, trying to get the word out everywhere. Um, I'm having an event this coming uh, next Saturday, the 19th um, is kind of a big event for me at Johnny's Bar in River Falls. Um, having a bunch of people come out. Kyle's going to be there. Kyle Hughes is going to be there. Um, Chad Kalenda, who's I think I pronounced his name right, is running for Pierce County uh, Sheriff. Uh, he's a great guy and, and and the man for the job. Uh, we're also going to have a band come out because that's my gig too. So I figured if we're going to have people come out, we're going to have a band called Dave's Not Here. Um, they're actually from the Twin Cities. They're going to come out and play some kind of old school classic rock and roll with us. Um, and it's just about getting getting ready for um, the spring and getting ready to make a big change uh, in Pierce County. So that's that's kind of my pitch. That's my next step. Uh, and, and I want to see as many people as I can and meet as many people as I can. That's awesome. Well, we're definitely going to do what we can to help you. I got the links out there, the donate links, all that other good stuff. So, uh, Martin, thank you so much for, for uh, bullying me, as it were. <laughs> you got <laughs> you, it. You, you do realize that we're going to be running this joke for, like, quite a while. Just Yeah, I'm cool with that. It's all right. It's all right. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and just, you know, just for the new listeners, I love the ongoing jokes just so you guys know <laughs> but yeah um thank you again for coming on i'm glad we finally connected you're always welcome on here and as we get closer to your election i know we're gonna have you back on i appreciate it thank you ed all right Martin, take care all right. all right guys that was martin Cressman here he's running for the pierce county uh, uh board there um, I'm always about to say school board, but it's not school board. It's the county board. And obviously you've heard what he's had to say. And here's a gentleman who's out there. This is about family. This is about community. And, you know, you take a look at when we talk about all politics being local, this is really where it's at. It's the idea that you as a citizen have an influence and impact in what happens in your local community. Now I get it. The statewide elections, they're sexy. They get the, the media attention and everything else. But there's a lot more impact on the local level. So um, I'm going to leave it at that. But I want to thank you guys all here for joining in here. Tracy, Kevin, Dan. I know we had Orlando in here. Darlene had a lot of folks. Stephanie, got to go through the list. Got to give shout outs to everybody. I want to thank you guys for joining in here. And as always, make sure that you like, share, subscribe to these episodes. and Make sure you check out the replay because we're going to have it on DLive Rumble, BitChute, Spotify Spreaker, and everywhere else you get their popular podcasts, wherever you want them at. You'll be able to find it there. So good night. God bless you. I will check in with you guys later this weekend. I'm out.